And finally, race day. How do you prepare for race day, the runner and the crew? What are the expectations? And what the skills are that are needed for successfully crewing a runner at Keys 100? I think the best practice is to let your crew know to, to stop as frequently as possible and kind of set that up. You know, maybe that's uh, two miles or three miles in the Keys, there's designated stopping points. So, you know, you would kind of study the course map, study the designated stopping and, and crewing areas. And I think try to utilize as many of those as possible. Ideally, what you want to have is your crew crossing the street safely. Of course, you know, obeying all traffic laws and all that and, and being very extra careful with that. But you want to have your crew take care of that. You know, we'd have a, a, a bucket ready with a, a bunch of items inside the bucket. You know, things that we already uh, kind of predetermined would be needed. But also you have a few extras just in case. So that way, you know, things happen and runners uh, you know, might need to adjust at some point. Like get to know your, get to know the athletes, ask them questions ahead of time. Like if there's any spe special things that they need, but they're pretty much gonna know what they want because they've already trained um, with, you know, with all the training that they had to do ahead of time. So, but like also intuition comes into play and being empathetic because, you know, sometimes people don't realize that they're dehydrated and they need to have electrolytes. And so that comes also with, Jay telling me that instead of writing down what everybody expects at any given moment, just write down what nutrition they had so that at the next stop, if they didn't have like protein or electrolytes or gels that you make sure to give them to them the next stop. I usually, in the beginning, I usually take notes, you know, if it's like every half hour or, or every hour or depending on the type of race, like if there's a certain stop, and I'll, I'll track, you know, what they eat, how many calories it is get an estimate of the mileage and time. And then, and I always ask too, like, did you eat something? Uh, did you go to the bathroom? You know, I always ask just to know. And, you know, if someone hasn't gone to the bathroom for six hours, then, you know, you definitely want to pay close attention to that with maybe the hydration. So as crew, your job is to keep your runner fed and watered and moving but it is also extremely important that you take care of yourself. No one's looking after you. So like you have to make sure you yourself are taken care of, like that you're eating, you're drinking, you're going to the bathroom. Uh, Cause it's easy to kind of put your, your own needs aside because you're so focused on helping a runner. Um, I think it was, it was like around like four o'clock in the day. I was like, look, if you can somehow take a nap for even an hour or half an hour right now, like you, you you can somehow just get that little bit of sleep, you should take it. But just that little bit of extra rest um, can go a long way throughout the night. Just pay attention to your runners and their needs. They're already gonna most likely know what they want, but you really have to be on top of, you know, um, just being there as their cheerleader and also making sure that they are getting in, you know, the things they need to get them to the finish line. Just make sure you take care of yourself, that you are resting because you are taking care of people and it's a very big responsibility, but it is actually more fun when you're in it. So it's gonna be great <laughs> no matter what. And so it's very important that the crew remain positive and be very encouraging of the runner along the way.